Hi, my name is Shane Kaufman. I'm a senior applications engineer for the AWR group at National Instruments, and I'm here to talk to you today and show you guys uh, a preview of some of the multi-technology uh, module and yield analysis um, capabilities within the uh, AWR design environment. And I'd first like to start by describing this uh, chip you see here in the upper left. Um, in the far upper left-hand corner of this chip, we have a um, gas cell phone PA uh, that was designed in microwave office. We have a uh, SIGI WLAN PA that was originally designed in Cadence and uh, translated over to be simulated in APLAC and the artwork was brought over as well um, and brought into our environment. We have some ball filters for the output of these devices and then we have an eight layer module um, a laminate with all the surface mount components for the input, output, um, input and output matching networks as well as the bias networks. So where this design began was um, actually load pulling these two devices. And these are the two Smith charts that we see on the bottom left and the upper right here. Um, the dashed lines actually represent the, I guess before I talk about the dashed lines, I'd like to take another step back and tell you that the load pull analysis that was done on these particular devices was done using our new load pull capabilities. And these load pull capabilities um, include the ability to um, do a nested sweep of all of the harmonics. So for every first harmonic for the load, all of the source harmonics were simulated for in all of the other um, load harmonics as well. So we did a, a big nested sweep of these particular devices and then we picked the best of the best for the uh, first, second, and third harmonics of the input and output matching networks for each of these devices. And that's what these dashed lines here represent. I'm gonna point the one out in, uh, in the lower left-hand corner. Um, so this would be the first harmonic, this would be the second harmonic, and this would be the third harmonic for the input matching network of the WLAN PA. Um, to describe this graph a little bit further, these circles here um, represent a particular load pull contour for both the power added efficiency and the output power where I've just set a goal, uh, you know, a particular um, power added efficiency that I wanted to achieve and a particular output power that I wanted to achieve with this design. Um, so you can see we have good matching with the first harmonic here and good matching with the third harmonic over here. This is all for the input matching network of the WLAN amplifier. Um, one thing that you're probably asking is, well, why doesn't the second harmonic match? And when you actually take a look at the load pull data, it turns out that for this particular device, the second harmonic almost had no impact at all on either of these performance metrics. So rather than make my matching networks more complicated, we decided to ignore it. Um, the same thing was done for the cell PA over here, except in this particular amplifier, um, the first and the second harmonic um, mattered more than the third, so we designed its matching input and output matching networks to um, the design the input and output matching networks for the first and second harmonic, and we decided to ignore the third. Um, the solid lines are the actual performance, and these are the impedance results looking into the EM structures um, that correspond to the input and output matching networks. So if we come over here and look at um, the input match for the cell, we see that we have Axiom here with our eight layer stack up and all of the ports representing this particular input matching network, including the ports to put the service mount component across. So the results as you're seeing obviously inc include the DC blocking caps as well as the input and output matching capacitors. Um, once um, all of the EM structures and all of the input and output matching networks were designed and we were happy with our impedances, um, we decided to simulate the entire module um, with those impedances. So if I look at this schematic here, um, we see that the entire module, this represents an EM structure, this is the um, cell phone PA, this is the, so this is the input matching network, the cell phone PA, the output matching network, and then the filter, and the, the same thing for the WLAN path below. Um, once we proved to ourselves that the performance of 
the amplifiers through, uh, were expected with those input and output matching networks, we decided to go ahead and combine them into one EM structure to see if the impedances um, due to some coupling between the input and output matching networks actually uh, changed and degraded our performance. So if we look at this EM structure, um, this is the entire module including all of the metallization for the bias networks as well as the input and output matching networks. And this was wired up with the amplifiers um, as well as the filters. So this is my schematic for that particular EM structure. You can see there are over 40 ports and then these are the uh, amplifiers and the matching capacitors and the input powers and things like that. Um, once we had those results, then we used our layer-based modifiers to look at the manufacturing variations, the manufacturing tolerances, such as uh, registration error in this particular case. To keep it simple, I didn't want to do too many uh, yield runs, so we wound up actually um, just looking at the registration error of uh, three of the particular layers. You could also look at things like um, the etch tolerance, right, if your metal was over-etched or under-etched. Uh, we have um, layer-based modifiers for that as well. And the graph you see on the bottom right here is uh, the solid line is the nominal value of the gain and the output power of this particular, of uh, the cell path through this particular module. And then the dashed lines are the, the yield results that were run um, when we were looking at the registration error um, and also the uh, surface mount component variation. And you might be asking yourself, well, there's a lot of variation here. Um, I purposefully used um, some pretty high variation capacitors because I wanted this to be illustrative. Uh, these um, particular components were 5% caps, which led to a lot of variation over here. So stay tuned for more on module design and yield analysis in the AWR design environment. And if you have any questions, please see us at ni.com slash AWR. Thank you.